Okay, we're at uh, Grandpa Henry and Grandma Ida's house that's right here at the Lutheran Community Center. And this is the, the garden that Grandpa has started and maintained for a number of years. They even have a sign that says Henry's Garden. Okay. okay, this is uh, Paul, the grandson of Henry and Ida Bernson, and we've just talked to Grandpa at Uncle Fritz's, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions, Grandma, okay? Okay. Asking you about your, your desire to teach, oh. and, and how you prepared for that, and where you first taught. Oh, all I ever wanted to do was teach school, and I dearly loved it. I started teaching over to Arletta in 1931 and I was there for three years. Stayed at a different house each time and the last time I stayed with uh, Henry's uncle and aunt up at Warren and, and, and I liked it real well over at the beach. And how did you, uh, where did you go to school to learn to be a teacher? I went to PLU it was PLC, and I went to high school and was lucky to get to go to school. And I was the first one in, a, in an immigrant family to go to college, so it's not real easy. But Irene Dahl was my mentor, so yeah. she helped me a lot. And, and what, are you Norwegian? I'm a Norwegian. <laughs> so you're a Norwegian immigrant's daughter, right? That's right. My grandpas both came from uh, Norway. And and what were your, uh, you remember your mom and dad's name? Yeah, my mother's name is Ragna Arneson Hinderly. And my grandpa's name is, my father's name is Baron. Severin Hinderley, and my grandpa was a teacher in Norway. Oh, your 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 father's father? Yeah, he was a teacher in Norway. Yeah. And do you know what part of Norway? Yeah. Well, my mother's folks came from Trondheim, and my father's folks were from Bergen, although it's a little south to Haugesund, and there's a place called Hinderley where they lived. Wow. So it's a farm. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So when when you taught in Arletta, Washington, for the, yes. Yes. You, you stayed, since you were a single woman, you, you needed to stay with the family, right? Right. So each year I stayed with a different family, just for no special reason. Okay, and so did you grow up in Parkland or Tacoma? In Parkland. And so going out to the peninsula, was that kind of like going out in the boonies? It really was. They thought I was going way So off. W when you taught, was it a, a, a one-room schoolhouse? One-room school. How many, how many grades? Uh, seven grades, and I had 28 children, and and I lived every minute of it. Yeah, and and you taught all your life, didn't you? Almost. Yeah. Well, I got in 27 years. And you took a break when the boys were young, that, right? Right. Ron and and David. And David. And and then you taught again at Parkland. Yes, and I was lucky that I got a job out of Clover Creek because um, my friend, her husband had 
scarlet fever or something, and so she had to quit for a while. And then she hoped she'd find somebody, so she happened to see me in church and thought it'd be fun if I'd ask if I could get it. So I got started out at Clover Creek. Wow. And I still get invitations to, for their reunions. Right I'll be 93. What? Yeah. <laughs> My birthday, December the 21st. Right. And this is 2004. 2004. So that's great. Okay, do you remember how you and Grandpa Henry met? Oh, now should I tell him? <laughs> uh, we heard his side of the story already. Oh, you yeah. have? Yeah, so let's hear your side. Oh, well, let's see now. Val was, uh, Henry asked Val to go up and get the new Arletta school teacher. Who's Val? Huh? Who's Val? Val's your little brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyways, so Val went up and got got me and then took me down to the Bernsons' home. So that's where I met him in the front room at, at, at uh, Cromwell. And, and how many years have you guys been married now? 60, Six, 69, 69 years. 69 years. That's amazing. And we've had a, a nice life. We feel like we've had a good life. Now, um, growing up, do you have any uh, special memories that you really liked remembering of your, your growing up? Oh, yes. I, I just had a real good time all the time. I like to be with groups of people, you know, like scouts and all. We've, and then after we got married, we were helping with the Boy Scouts. And, and I think David's lucky that he, Paul Larson, really took you under his wing. And he let him go with older kids, because there weren't very many kids that age. Okay. So he was with Tommy Swinlin and uh, Dale Storsley a lot. And then when Ronnie came along, why, there were nine fourth grades in the Parkland grade school. Wow. So when you were a kid, did you ever play school? Oh, I played school all the time. <laughs> My dad let me have a, a school room out in the milk room where he separated the milk and, and neighbor kids came over every day and, and I had real books because uh, Gladys and Ed had to buy their books down in Oregon so we had real books and arithmetic and reading and just had a ball, the neighbors. Oh, you taught the neighbors? Oh, yeah, the Benson kids and the Thompsons, and they all came over. We, we've had a good life. I have had a real good life. Well, what we've enjoyed is fixing things all the time. Henry can all fix everything. So we started out in a little cabin up from the ferry landing at Cromwell and then we uh, we fixed that little cabin and then we were going to have David so we had to move we moved into town to my old home where I lived and um, well and my dad talked us into staying home to have David at home instead of going to the hospital. And I thought that was funny because, so we had David right in my old bedroom. How'd that work? The doctor came out and slept on the Davenport 
and my mother baked bread for him because she knew he liked homemade bread. Yeah. And he stayed overnight. Wow. And then David was born in the morning. I had to stay in bed for nine days. And at the end of that time, Olive and Ed got married in the front room at yeah. our place. At, at, at your house? At our house. In her folks' house in Park. Okay. And, and we had all those flowers and gladiolas all over them, decorating the house for her wedding. Well, that's... And can you tell me a little bit about your mom and dad? Well, they worked hard, and I think they had a really a, a tough time when they were young. First came to Canby, Oregon, because it seems like uh, my uncles took extra good care of them, and my grandparents, the Arntsons, lived in Canby, and that's where everybody went because Grandpa and Grandma were there, and he was a shoe repairman, and Henry's dad was a shoe repairman, so we should have good shoes, shouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Henry. Well, we've had a good life. Yes. We really have, and we've got four nice grandkids, and we dearly love them. And yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. You did a good job. We think that we've got a good family, and they're all Christians. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, now, if this is known, that tape, this is something I can... I paid $200 to have a thing fixed on there, so it was like a, a bracelet that you'd fasten. Uh -huh. And today, I slipped that over that, uh, that knuckle, and it slipped on, so I'm wearing my ring. <laughs> oh, good. Great. I haven't, and uh, uh, Sherry said, well, the bone is still there, but there isn't any fat there. So that's how come the ring goes over the bones. And I'm pretty glad about that because I, I haven't worn this for years. That's just this morning, huh? Yeah, this morning. You know, and, and describe where we are in the six plexus here. Oh, we like it real well in the six plex. <clears throat> we own the inside of the house. We don't have to worry about the lawn. But they let Henry uh, clean out the brush and the blackberries and, and all those cottonwood trees. And the minute uh, Paul Upgrandy told Henry that he could do that, he got his friends to bring their saws over and saw all those trees down. So this, is, uh, this was all brush, and now it's Henry's garden. Yeah, it's beautiful. And before and the garden, describe what was, uh, describe the putting green situation. Oh, oh, and then over at the meeting at the, sixplex meeting, uh, one of the fellows asked there if Henry would make a golf uh, putting green over here. So uh, he said he'd never done it, but he went and asked a bunch of questions to him up at the golf course and all, because he started playing golf after he right, retired from working at PLU. And and I was glad for that because I'd had fun all my life and here he'd worked all the time. So that's what was fun. Yeah. And he played golf. I think he won a couple of things. Some he won a tournament when he was 94? I think 93 or 94. Yeah. He, he, won a, he was the oldest one in a golf tournament and won. Any, anyone, yes. That's, that's awesome.
Well, thank you. Oh, now this was fun. I didn't